Welcome back, Aluxers. For most of us, the last few months have been far from easy. As we've witnessed with the coronavirus pandemic and the lockdown that's come with it, some of us can say we've fared better than others, but nobody has come out unaffected. Today, we're looking at one lucky group of people, and if we believe reports in the media, they're actually even better off than they were before. Who else could it be than those at the extreme upper end of the earning scale? A group so exclusive that only about 2,000 worldwide can claim membership to this club. That's right, the world's billionaires. News stories have been doing the rounds claiming that billionaires have gotten richer as a result of the pandemic. We are going to be looking at the facts and focusing on some noteworthy cases and asking if the reports are actually true. It'll include some of our favorite billionaires. Spoiler alert, at least some of them definitely got richer, as well as one or two names that might be new to you. And we'll save the biggest winner from the so-called billionaire bonanza until near the end. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. So let's dive in and take a look at how and if billionaires really did get richer in the pandemic. The Claims First, where did this story start? It looks like it began with a report from the U.S. Institute of Policy Studies, which came out in May. Here's what the report says. Between the 18th of March and the 19th of May, the combined net worth of America's 600 billionaires increased by $434 billion to reach a whopping total of $3.38 trillion. At least eight American billionaires have added another billion dollars to their wealth during the pandemic, and the net worth of 34 American billionaires increased by tens of millions of dollars each or more. Some sources have questioned it. The figures do require a certain amount of guesswork, as not all the numbers are in the public domain. But let's start by taking a look at a few attributes and behaviors of some of the world's ultra-rich and seeing how they fared. CEOs and major shareholders in a huge tech company came out richer. This won't be a big surprise, especially when it comes to teleconferencing companies. Many of us hadn't even heard of Zoom six months ago, and if you still haven't heard of it and its CEO and founder Eric Yuan, make a note of his name, because chances are you'll be hearing it a lot more from now on. Since the beginning of the outbreak, the use of this Silicon Valley startup has increased 19 times, and estimates of the net worth of its Chinese-American founder have doubled to $2.6 billion. Elsewhere, it looks like another big winner is the former CEO of Microsoft, Steve Ballmer, who still owns major shares in the tech firm. Keep in mind that Teams and Skype are both Microsoft-owned, and they've been both in huge demand. And it isn't just video conferencing. Tech in general has been doing well, as we've all been using it more and more, with stream sites and social media coming out well. So it's no surprise that Mark Zuckerberg's fortunes have increased by $9 billion to a grand total of $80 billion. Major shareholders in giant retail outlets came out richer. A case in point here is the Walton family, major shareholders of Walmart. The pandemic may have been a nightmare for retail, with countless retailers being forced to shut down for good. But when people stock up on groceries, appliances, and other essential goods, or when they go into full-on panic buying mode, of course they go to the big retailers. That means small players lose out, and large ones take their place. Walmart isn't the only success story here, but it is the biggest. All of its 5,300 stores in the USA stayed open, while smaller traders were having to shut their doors. And their major shareholders, Jim, Alice, and Rob Walton, each increased their wealth by about $3 billion between February and May. Leaders of companies that shifted to medical devices debatable. A case in point is James Dyson, CEO of the company that's named after him and is best known for making vacuum cleaners. He's one of a number of billionaires who switched some of his company's production to medical devices that were of vital importance during the pandemic, namely ventilators. To give credit where credit's due, he did donate a large number of ventilators free of charge to countries across the world, and his success was due to a number of factors, including his company reporting excellent figures over a long period of time. The result? He's just moved into the UK's top spot when it comes to wealth, at $6.3 billion. And one of our regular favorites, Elon Musk, has a similar story. He also used some of Tesla and SpaceX's production to produce ventilators, some of which he donated. But also like Dyson, this wasn't the only factor behind his increase in wealth. Another is Tesla staying on the upward trend as investors were able to see beyond the pandemic. Either way, it's estimated that his net worth has increased by $8 billion since March. There's been some speculation that some of this has come into production of medical devices, but in reality, Tesla's performance is probably a bigger factor. Free riding on aid packages 
looks like it helped the super rich. This is the point where things start to get sketchy. When the crisis took hold in the USA, Congress approved an economic rescue package, which included $349 billion for small businesses, the Paycheck Protection Program. Its stated aim was to help small companies with employees with fewer than 500 employees, from going under to save jobs. It came with friendly 1% interest rates. The thinking was that larger companies could finance themselves by raising money on the markets or borrow it from banks. So far, so good. But problems started to occur when it turned out the lion's share was finding its way into the accounts of big companies. This is something that's been reported extensively by the New York Times and other sources. CEOs and their lawyers knew how to manipulate the bill so they could benefit from it, even though they weren't the intended beneficiaries. After an uproar in the media, some companies agreed to return their loans, like fast food chain Shake Shack. But plenty of big companies didn't, including ones with shady financial or illegal irregularities. Tens of billions of dollars that were intended to keep people employed ended up popping up the dividends and share statements of the super rich. It seems likely that we'll hear more from this story in the coming months. Dumping or shorting stocks definitely helps unless you get caught doing it the wrong way. Anybody can play the stock market, but not everyone is going to come out on top. But the super rich sure know how to play it. They spend more time analyzing it, have an instinct for which stocks to invest in. It's part of what makes them rich in the first place, and it helps with them to keep getting richer. And most of the time, they do this in a way that's totally legit. But other times, it involves them misusing insider knowledge. A case in point is Republican Senator for North Carolina Richard Burr, who offloaded $1.7 million in stocks before the crisis hit and before the public had access to the same information that he had. He's still being investigated. But whether it's done legitimately or not, you can bet that when a crisis hits, a lot of billionaires will be hitting new heights of wealth by playing the stock market to their advantage. And before we move on to the ones who lost out, if you're a billionaire, we're gonna mention one surefire way to push your wealth one level further in times of crisis. Being the owner of Amazon. We've saved this one for last because as the pandemic has shown us, it looks like the surest way to get even richer in times of a crisis. We admit it isn't much use unless your name happens to be Jeff Bezos. As we were mostly confined to our homes, that meant we depended on having our shopping delivered. And with its vast delivery networks giving it a competitive advantage, Amazon was the lockdown's number one winner. And the fact that the Amazon business empire includes streaming service Amazon Prime doesn't exactly hurt. During the pandemic, it brought in a trillion dollars, and Jeff Bezos, already the richest individual in the world, saw his wealth reach new, uncharted heights. Since January 1st, it's skyrocketed by $25 billion. That's roughly the entire GDP of Iceland. This increase in wealth is unprecedented in the history of modern markets, and his net worth now stands at $150 billion. And Jeff isn't the only person with the surname Bezos who's done well. His ex-wife, Mackenzie Bezos, saw her wealth grow by a third to $48 billion, thanks to the Amazon shares she received as part of her divorce settlement. Now, we've looked at how some billionaires increased their wealth. Let's ask one more question. Did all billionaires get richer? And the answer is a resounding no. A lot did, and it's difficult to get exact figures, but it's likely that the combined wealth of the world's billionaires increased, just like the report we mentioned at the beginning of the video stated. But there are those who lost their billionaire status. Of the 2,153 people who were in the Forbes billionaires list back in 2019, 267 are no longer billionaires. And at least in some cases, the pandemic seems to be the reason for this. On the list, we can see a large number of company founders in sectors that have fared poorly. These mainly include hotel and catering industries. And while we were in lockdown, most of us were less concerned about looking our most stylish, which is why the fashion industry took a big hit. Founders of clothing retailers Gap, Forever 21, Urban Outfitters, and Canada Goose are among those who've been downgraded to the lowly status of, well, multimillionaires. So to answer our question, did billionaires get richer in the pandemic? Some of them, yes. In a few cases, a lot richer, but by no means all of them. There's been a lot of talk about how the pandemic has concentrated wealth even more than before, and it seems this is true even among the world's most exclusive group, billionaires. So Alexers, which of these stories about billionaires and how they fared in the pandemic surprised you the most? Tell us in the comments below. And since you stuck with us until the end, you know it's time for your bonus. While we were researching this video, we hit on an interesting fact that totally fits in with the topic of billionaires getting richer, and it ties in with one of the biggest themes of the last few months, social distancing. 
we discovered that demand for private islands increased four times during the pandemic. If you want to buy an entire island, it sure helps to be a billionaire. And whether demand increasing is down to the super rich having even more money, or because the pandemic has made us want to be able to isolate in case another one strikes, well, that's up to debate. But we know from brokers working in the luxury private island niche that since March, buyers have been showing increased interest in escaping to an island reserved especially for them. Demand is particularly high among customers from North America, and islands in the Caribbean and Central America top the list of desirable and tropical retreats. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question on our website, alux.com. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.